Hello everybody and welcome to Minecraft 121. The new update is finally here and it looks to be a good one. There's a ton of new stuff to discover such as awesome new creatures, terrifying new foes and of course we can explore the new trial chambers. It is Minecraft the Tricky Trials update and this is gonna be awesome. Now, as you can see behind me, I've been a busy boy and I have done a ton of work. But we're going to start from the start and go back to the beginning. And this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The Minecraft 121 update is here. The Tricky Trials update. And as you can see, I have started a brand new survival world. And I have spawned in a mesa which while it is absolutely awesome to look at it's not the greatest biome for gathering resources so we're gonna make our way out of here very shortly now of course the first thing you'll notice is that this is not a hardcore world this is a normal survival world it is locked on hard but i've decided to go with a normal survival world and not hardcore because this series i want to focus on expanding my building skills I just feel that I've stagnated a little bit, perhaps fallen into a bit of a rut and relying too much on what is comfortable and familiar and I want to see if in this series I can push the boundaries of my imagination and it's a lot easier to do if I'm not constantly worrying about losing all of my progress when I die. Now yes I do understand that that is the basic fundamentals of the hardcore game and while it is a lot of fun, I think in this series I want to focus on other areas of the game. But that does not mean that I am done with hardcore or with my hardcore world at all. I will return to it as soon as I think I am ready and I will probably be updating it to Minecraft 121 when I do. But for now, this is a clean slate, a fresh start, a brand new world and I think this is going to be an absolutely brilliant adventure. And we're going to start it off the same way that we start off every new Minecraft world by punching a tree. And we've gathered some basic tools. We've got stone pickaxe, a stone axe, and we need some food. Next up, we're going to need some wool. And then we're going to use said wool to make ourselves a bed. Because it is night and I have no stomach to tangle with all of the monsters that are going to spawn in just a few seconds. So let's get our bed down and let's sleep for the first time. With the light of the new day, our adventure continues and just across the river, we have a jungle biome and I want to go grab a few saplings but before we do that we need to navigate and find our way down this mountain. Now because this is not a hardcore world I can die as many times as I like but I don't want to do that. I want to try and keep my number of deaths as low as possible and in order to do that I think I need a bit of an incentive or rather a deterrent. I think for every time that I die there needs to be some sort of penalty. Now, what that penalty is going to be, I have no idea. I haven't thought of anything good yet. So if you have an idea, drop it in the comments below because I've been wrecking my brain and I haven't been able to come up with anything good yet. But first, let's grab a little bit of food, grab a few saplings, and then we'll make our way deeper into this world. Now, with this update, two of the most important resources is going to be copper and tough because there are some absolutely fantastic new blocks for each of them on the copper side we have some magnificent copper bulbs we have copper trapdoors copper grates and they look awesome on the tough side we have tough bricks chisel tough bricks chisel tough and smooth tough and they also look absolutely fantastic so i'm definitely going to be using those two in a lot of my builds in this series and that means i'm going to grab all the copper i see we are being accosted by a zombie and it's a bit of a problem because I have no armor, no gear and all I have to defend myself is a stone axe which just broke. But I am officially a monster hunter, a prestigious title bestowed only upon the select few who kill a monster in Minecraft which is pretty much everybody who plays on anything except creative. But I have a new axe and we can continue gathering our copper. With a few tons of copper collected, it's time to continue our adventure and I am going to seek out some of the magnificent new creatures that this update has to offer. 
And speak of the devils, we have some wolves and just look at them. They look absolutely fantastic. Now, if you don't know, there are actually nine different types of wolves in Minecraft now. And part of my plan for this series is to collect one of each of these wolves and to build a magnificent kennel where all of them can stay. But right now, I don't have any bones to tame them, so I will be back for them a little bit later. Right now, I need to find a place where I can settle down. And it really didn't take very long for me to find a place that I would be happy to call my home. This is an absolutely brilliant spot with a ton of resources. We have a cherry biome on the mountain. Over to the right, we have a village. But that's not all, not by a long shot. If we go in that direction, we will find a dark oak forest. And all of this is very, very awesome indeed. But the main reason why I chose this location is not the cherry biome, not the village, and not the dark oak forest just around the corner. The reason why I chose this is the savanna over there. Because the savanna is where the armadillos live, and I want to go and find one as soon as possible. But before we do that, I'm going to hop over to the village, see if they've got anything good I can use, and then we're going to make our way to the savanna, find ourselves an armadillo, and see if they are as cute as I hope they are. Disappointing news, the village was an absolute bust. However, I did manage to get some feathers, which allowed me to make some brushes. And I'll explain why that is important in just a minute. But first, let's find an armadillo. Eh? Oh, there it is. Just look at it curled into a little ball. It is really the cutest thing that I have seen in Minecraft in all my years playing. Now the armadillo isn't just a cute little new animal, they are also quite useful and they go hand in hand with all of the beautiful new wolf types we have. Because if you have a brush, you can walk up to armadillo and you can give it a little sweep and it will give you some scoots in return. Now if you're wondering why I didn't get an achievement for doing that, it's because I have already done that. But like the total pro that I am, I wasn't recording when I did. So anyway, there we have it, the armadillo, my new favorite animal by a mile. And just look at it. It is really the cutest thing I have ever seen and I absolutely love it. But we've got some scoots and we have a ton of work to do. So let's get on with it. It's time to start thinking about building our starter house. And for that, I'm going to need some iron. As you can see at the moment, I'm still operating with a stone axe, stone pickaxe, stone hoe, and pretty much everything stone. Now, if you could make stone armor, I'd probably have some of that as well, but you can't. So I'm going to need some iron to gear myself up properly. And so far, iron seems to be one of the scarcest resources in this world. Usually you can find a ton of iron just by walking about, digging up whenever you see it. And so far, I haven't seen much. In fact, these eight pieces are the only ones I have managed to collect. And even that was a mission, which means I might need to go caving. And we have a skeleton, but not today, buddy. Let's just get rid of this guy. And then let's make our way into the cave. See if there's any iron in here. Oh, I don't see any iron, but we definitely have a zombie. And we'll take care of him. Ow, he really hurts a lot if you don't have any armor. I think let's just have a few pork chops. And then let's build up our powers before venturing forth into the darkest depths of this cave. Now, of course, this is the most difficult time to stay alive because I need to get iron desperately. And there are tons of monsters in here. Which makes, oh, no, 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 no. Let's just run away from skeleton. Oh, he hurts. And that is a result of not having any armor, of course. So once again, let's chow some pork chops, get our powers up, and we'll go take care of Mr. Skeleton. And we're going to take it nice and slow, keep our shield up, and then we will whack him. It is pitch dark in here. I can't see a thing. I, I think I got him. Yeah, I must have got him. Awesome. Okay, so let's just go carefully. We'll go down there in a second and then we will light it up. See if we can find any of the good stuff down here. And I'm really not too keen on going down there because I suspect there might be all sorts of nasty things lurking down there. Instead, let's go up in this direction because I have a very good feeling about this space right here. 
We're gonna find some. Okay, we're gonna find nothing apparently. Oh well, that was disappointing. Now we might not have the greatest haul of iron ever collected, but we do have a little bit. Enough, in fact, to have made a pickaxe, and now I can make myself an iron chest plate. A little bit of armor is gonna go a long way to keeping me alive, and I have made another advancement. Suit up! So let's just collect our furnace, let's collect our crafting bench, and then we'll venture forth once again in search of the elusive iron. Because I need to make a ton of stuff before I can even start to think about building my starter base. Now I haven't had much luck in the mines, which means I am going to go up to the tippy top of this mountain and see if I have better luck up there. There has to be iron around here somewhere and I am going to find it. Now, uh, yeah, we haven't had a lot of luck up here either. And uh, this terrain is slightly treacherous. I'll just... No! Oh, well, that sucks. And that was our first death, as you will see in the top left-hand corner. I'm going to keep a running Doom counter. Every time I do die, I will put the new number up there. And so far, the count is one. Now, of course, I am back at spawn because I'm used to playing on hardcore and there if you die, it doesn't matter if you have your spawn set because the world is over. However, this is survival and if I die, I can continue and I really should be more careful about setting my spawn because it sucks to have to run all the way from here back to where I was without any armor, any food or any supplies. And I think I fell to my death around here somewhere. Yeah, there's my stuff down there. So we'll get all of that back. And I think I'm going to need to be a little bit more careful on the cliffs. I'm used to having feather falling boots, which at this point I do not have. So yeah, let's just get the last bit of our stuff. And then let's continue our search for iron. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to look next. I've looked at the top of the mountain, I've looked in the caves, and so far, this world seems to be suffering from a touch of anemia. But we will carry on, we will persevere, and I'm sure in no time at all, we will have a ton of iron. However, I don't think we're going to find it here. Even if you look up at these cliffs, there's just no iron in sight anywhere. Now I found a little bit of iron, but I found something even more awesome. Because if you look over there, you will see a cobblestone wall and that can only mean one thing. It's a spawner and by the sounds of it, it is a skeleton spawner. Which is absolutely brilliant news. It gives me an early source of experience, an early source of bones and I can do an absolute ton with all of that. So I'm going to take this easy and slow. Let's just dig a little hole and ooh, chest. And we have our first golden apple as well. We've got some music discs. We've got some rotten flesh. I think I'll grab the bucket. I will grab the string. And then I'll just see if I can get a torch in there to stop the skeletons from spawning. So let's take out this block. There we go. And let's pop a torch down there. So now there's a light level too high for them to spawn. And we can get busy cleaning out the spawner. Oh, uh, if we don't get killed first, that is. So we've cleaned out the spawner and I must say it is absolutely fantastic how close the spawner is to where I want to build my starter base. In fact, let me show you. We simply hop over this little rise over here. We climb up these few blocks and already you can see the torches I have placed down to mark off where I'm going to build my starter house. It is absolutely brilliant. Just look at Fungosaurus Rex now. Full iron armor and I am ready to take on just about anything this world can throw at me. And now that we've geared up, I think it is time to start thinking about our food situation. I'm going to start out by laying out some paths, just plan out the area a little bit, get an idea of where I want to place my farms and how big I want them to be. And I think this is where I'm going to have my starter house's front door. So let's start out over here, wind our way down and try and create a few natural feeling paths. Something that'll give us an interesting look and that'll mark out exactly where we're going to build some of our infrastructure. 
our first roads are in place and I have decided that this is where I'm going to be building my wheat and beetroot farm. I found a few beetroot seeds, I've been collecting wheat seeds and that will also allow me to start up my cow and pig farms. Now they're going to be very simple, very basic, just some manual farms as much for aesthetics as anything else at this point. Now I'm just going to enlarge this area here a little bit just to give me a little bit more space to work with. I don't want to go too fancy with the farms at the moment. I don't want them cascading down the hills just yet. So let's just get all of this covered and then we can start planting our first fields. So let's take a quick step back and yeah I think that will be just enough space. And our first farm is in place. I've put down a few fences just because I want to make it look nice as well. But while I've been doing that, we got some visitors. As you can see right over there, we've got a patrol. And this gives me the opportunity to check out another new feature. Now, usually when you come across a pillager patrol, you would have to stand over here and get them to shoot their captain in order not to get the bad omen effect. Now, even though I'm standing here and letting them shoot their own captain because it is hilarious, I don't need to do that anymore, as I'll demonstrate just as soon as I've taken care of these guys. With the addition of the trial chambers, they have added another new item to the game, and it is this ominous bottle. Now, in order to get the bad omen effect, I will need to chug this bottle, and that ties in with the trial chambers. If you are in the trial chambers and you drink the ominous potion, the spawners closest to you will turn into ominous spawners, and that will allow you to get an ominous vault key. Now, you might be sensing a pattern here, and yes, you are correct. That will allow you to open the ominous vaults. And inside, you can find stuff like the heavy core, which can be used to make a mace. And I'm definitely getting myself one of those in the future. But right now, I am doing this a little bit of landscaping because I need food desperately. As you can see, I've got 10 pork chops left. I need to get some cows bred up. I need to get some pigs bred up. But before I can do that, I need to make them some pens. And in order to do that, I will need a beautiful road leading down to said pens. So let's just grab a little bit more dirt so I can build a ramp going down here, leading all the way to the river where I want to place my cow and my pig pen. My cow pen has been completed and as you can see behind me, I've got my first suckers in tow. Just a little bit of wheat is enough to make them follow you right into the slaughterhouse. There we go, my beauties. Now, let's make a few tiny cows and start our cow farm. Now, I've been wondering, you've got pork chops, you've got lamb chops, but has anybody ever actually seen a cow chop? Do they exist or do we simply call them something else? I have no idea. If you know, let me know in the comments below. And with our cow farm completed, it's time to work on our pig pen and I'm gonna start over here with some fences just put them down into whatever shape I think this should be I think I'm going to make a nice round pig pen and it'll fit into this area pretty well I have no idea what size this needs to be but I think it needs to be quite large because I'm gonna need a ton of porkers in here so I'm just gonna put down a few fences up until there and then I'm gonna head up the hill see what the shape looks like and make any alterations that I might need to. And I think that might be a little bit big, so let's just take out a few over here and refine the shape. Now I wasn't trying too hard to make it perfectly round, but that is looking really, really good. A lot of times I try and make my shapes a little bit more random, not too circular or too perfect, but I really do like the way that that pig farm is looking at the moment. So I'm going to leave it just like that. And as you can see, I've added a few bits and bobs to our cow farm. Just a few lifestyle enhancements, some water troughs, a bit of hay. But what I've been focusing on mostly is getting some beetroot going because I think it is time for me to go and find me some pigs for my pig pen. And we've collected a bunch of future bacon, so it is time to breed up these guys. I've already done a little bit of breeding, but we need plenty more in order to make this farm worthwhile. So let's just go around, make sure that everybody has gotten some beetroot and has produced some offspring. 
And yeah, that looks to be everybody right now. And with the completion of these two farms, my food problems should be something of the past very shortly. And let's just give them a glimpse of their future. Yeah, that's right, you're gonna be pork chops. Anyway, with that done, we've taunted the pigs, we've got the cows all bred up, and it is time to turn our attention to building. And I've been searching for spruce, and I do believe I have found some, because spruce is one of the saplings that I don't have yet. I've got a bunch of saplings, I've got some cherries, some jungle, and all sorts, but spruce is still lacking, and it's one of the most important ones that I need. You can grow a ton of spruce with just four saplings, and as a result, I use a lot of spruce in my builds. It also looks pretty awesome, so it's a win-win all around, but it's getting dark, and I need to go to bed. That is, if it allows me to go to bed, and I'm not sure why it doesn't want me to sleep, because it is looking pretty dark to me, so... And, uh, oh, yeah, there we go. So I've got my spruce and I've run out of food, so I am resorting to eating some berries. Now berries is the most annoying food you can have because if you don't look straight up like this while eating it, you end up planting them in front of you, which pretty much just ruins the berry. However, it has gotten me fed and it's time to move on to the next material I want to gather and that is dark oak. Now fortunately, I know exactly where to find dark oak and I'm heading there now to grab me a bunch of logs as well as some saplings. And here we go, the dark oak forest. It is a pretty good forest. So we're going to start just chopping down a few of these trees, which will give me some logs, probably enough to complete my first build. But I also get some saplings in the process. And that means I'll be able to grow all of the dark oak I need for future builds. Fortunately, we have also discovered some iron over here in the dark oak forest and I'm gonna grab it because I still need a ton of the stuff. Now I can hear some zombies groaning and oh, there's a little hidey hole. I'll bet there's something awesome in there. And yeah, it's pretty dark. So let's not be stupid about this. Let's take it easy, light up the place and go in very, very carefully. So I'll just chop out that block, remove that stalagmite and then let's see what else we did. No! Okay, and that was both very mean and very stupid of me. And the doom counter goes up to two. Now there's a bigger problem at hand here and that is the fact that I broke my bed once again. I am at spawn, it's getting dark and I have absolutely nothing on me. We've made it back, we've gotten our stuff back. However, you might notice in the corner that the doom counter is now up to three. I did not survive the night, the trip back cost me another life. However, we have found a lush cave and this is awesome for a number of reasons. Firstly, I want to get myself an axolotl and just look at him, absolutely beautiful. Secondly, I need some clay because like a genius, I decided I'm going to build my starter house out of bricks. Because I am the third little piggy, I am clever and I'm going to build something strong and durable. Now the other thing I want to collect while I'm over here is of course some moss. I don't have any of it yet and I just need one or two pieces. But first let's grab some clay then I'll make my way down into the cave and go find me a bunch of moss. Even though I've collected all the moss I need I was about to leave when I noticed just how many spore blossoms there are in this cave and I mean just look at that. Usually they are quite rare. I struggled in my previous world to find a bunch of them. So I'm going to grab all of these while I can. And that means I'm going to grab my dirt, put up a bit of a scaffolding to get me closer to the roof and harvest all of these spore blossoms. So let's just start over here, work our way up and then all around the ceiling to grab those spore blossoms. And this is what I should have done with the previous creeper, simply held up my shield. I know that, but I had almost no time and I panicked. So I paid the price and it resulted in two deaths. Anyway, uh, yeah, it has raining, it is dark and that is not what I wanted to do at all. And there are mobs spawning all over the dark oak forest. So I'm going to get rid of this guy, just go grab my bed once again. And then I'm getting out of here because this place is about to become extremely dangerous and I don't want to have any part of it. We're back home, we've got the spruce, we've got the dark oak, we've got some clay and it is time to go after some tough. 
Now, Tuff usually spawns around Deep Slate level, which means I need to go down. And I must say, one thing I realized, I don't know if anything's been changed in world generation or anything like that, but the world doesn't seem to be as hollow as it was in previous versions of the game. I am actually able to dig a stairwell all the way down to Deep Slate level without falling into a ginormous cave, and that makes me very, very happy indeed. Now another thing that I noticed, and once again this might just be my imagination, is that I'm getting a lot more saplings per tree. Usually I had to chop down a bunch of trees, especially dark oak, to get enough saplings to replant, but this time around it seems that I am getting plenty of saplings every time I chop down a tree. So if that was changed, it is something that I very much approve of. And we've reached tough. Here we go. I need to collect a bunch of this stuff. I don't know how much I'm going to need exactly. And I don't want to go too crazy with it in my starter house. But usually where there's tough, there is some iron as well. And that is something that I very, very much need. So, oh, not iron, but we have found some diamonds. And this could be the start of something beautiful. Is it just one? No, there's two. Oh, there's three. This is turning out to be absolutely fan- Oh yes baby, we have four diamonds. And that gives me enough to make myself a diamond pickaxe. Just look at that. But before we do that, let's gather some more tuff. And then we'll go look for a few other resources that I'm going to need to build my starter house. And one of those resources is granite. I'm going to mix in a little bit of granite with the bricks cause it gives a beautiful effect. And I think it's time to take care of some animals. First thing I'm gonna do is put my axolotl friend in a little puddle over here. I'll build him a bigger pond later on, but he'll be much happier in there than he is in a bucket. He also needs a name, so if you have suggestions, let me know. I was wandering through the savannah and I spotted this little guy. Just look how cute he is. And I've noticed that if you stand perfectly still, he won't curl up into the ball. In fact, he will walk right up to you and apparently get stuck against your leg. But just look at him. Ah, oh, look at that cute little tail. It's like a worm. As happy as the little Obadolo made me, that is not the reason I am here. I am here to find myself a wolf. And I haven't had any luck with that yet, but I have found some lava and of course I'm gonna need some obsidian as well, both for an enchanting setup and to make myself a nether portal. And now that I have a diamond pickaxe, I can gather some. So I'm just gonna plonk a block down here, get out of the water stream and then dig up a bunch of this stuff. Now it would have been really cool if you could actually make an obsidian sword or obsidian knife of some kind, but we're gonna have to settle for diamonds. Now I need at least 10 pieces of obsidian for my nether portal and then of course a few for my enchanting table. And here's the wolf and oh wow he really wanted to be my friend. First bone we have a beautiful puppy. So let's get puppy home and then we're gonna make him some armor. Because I've got a bunch of armadillo scoots and I want to see what it looks like and how it works. First we need to navigate our way down the mountain once again and you can see down there is our base. We've got the farm, we've got the pig and the cow pen and I think it's starting to take some awesome shape. But first let's see if we can get puppy home safely. Here we are home safely puppy is sitting he's been introduced to his axolotl brother and we're gonna make him some armor so let's see what do I need. I need six armadillo scoots. I have six armadillo scoots. Alrighty and let's make ourselves some wolf armor. That is really weird looking that little picture over there but I'm hoping it's gonna look awesome once we have it on puppy. Now I wonder if I can color this. Uh, I don't have any dye at the moment. Let's just get it on the doggy and then we'll see what that looks like and yes pups is battle ready now. He looks absolutely fantastic. And um, now the next question is how how do I get it off? Because I want to try and dye it. Let's see, I'll just grab some flowers. Perhaps I can dye it on the doggo itself. And uh, we've got some blue dye. And no, um, yeah, that's just going to dye his collar. That wasn't too clever of me. So I think I might need to turn to the internet to find out how the heck do I get this armor off. And apparently you just shear it off. Because, you know... 
cutting armor off your dog with giant metal shears isn't disturbing at all, but we got it off and we're gonna see if we can dye it. I assume you just grab some dye. Let's make some blue dye. I've got some lapis and now we have blue dye. And then I think you just combine them like pretty much everything else. And yes, and let's see how my dog looks with. Oh yeah, just look at that. So enough playing around with the animals, it's time to continue my search for materials and to start building my home. And I have continued down the little staircase and ended up in a mineshaft. Now Doggo is coming with me, he's gonna keep me safe at all times. Because mineshafts are notoriously dangerous, you've got spider spawners, you've got zombie and skeleton spawners, and you've got creepers lurking around every dark corner. It is however an awesome place to find some resources. And we've run into our first spawner. It's a skeleton spawner and um, yeah, I'm not going to do anything with this one purely because I have a better one closer to home. And just look at my doggo go. He's an absolute beast. And these two got into a bit of a scuffle, which is just fine by me because it makes my job a lot easier. So we'll just pop a torch down there and then let's look at what goodies we have. Some iron, gunpowder, a bucket, a name tag and a music disc. Ooh, okay, an enchanted golden apple, some more bones, some redstone and just some other assorted stuff. This is all fine and well, but we are here to look for iron, to look for diamonds and to look for anything else that could help us build our awesome start out. And there we go, just some diamonds over there. I'll come and collect them in just a second. But first, I just want to scout around quickly, make sure nothing is going to jump on me while I am collecting my diamonds and nope, coast is clear. Let's go grab them. And uh, okay, just the one. I'm hoping there's more. Please give me more. And it's not looking good, unfortunately. I think, unfortunately, this is going to be just the one. Oh, no. And the doom counter moves up to four. I think that was a bit unfair, mine shafts usually are, which is why I steer clear of them until I am better equipped. But at least my bed is in place and I can sleep through the night. So. Let's just sleep and then we'll make our way back to go get our stuff. I think I'm going to have Doggo sit. I don't want him to get blown up by a creeper, even though that armor looks like it can take a lot of punishment. However, I'm not going to risk it. And here we go. All of our stuff. It is scattered all over the place, but it's still here. So I am happy. Anyway, let's just get a few torches in here, light this up a little bit and um, oh, hang on, inventory full, let's just put our gear back on and that gives us a few more slots so we can pick up the rest of our nonsense. And with that done, we can carry on exploring the mines now. I'm just gonna check if there's anything down here that looks interesting and uh, now there's some lava. There's plenty of shafts still to be explored up here. So I'm going to do that first and ooh, golden apple. Awesome. We've got some bread. I'm not too interested in that, but I will take those torches and the rails and the rest. I think I will leave here for now. Ooh, diamond, more diamonds. Awesome. And this is why I am risking life and limb in these tunnels to get all of these beautiful uh, diamonds. It helps if I use the correct tool, does it not? And please don't tell me that this is one again. No, it's not. We've got more than one. Oh, we've got three at least. Gimme, gimme, gimme. And let's see if we are lucky and there are more than three. And it seems not. But check this out. This is the tunnel that keeps on giving. We have not one, but two zombie spawners in very close proximity, which means we can make a double spawner zombie farm. And while I think that is a project for the next episode, it's good to know we've got some early experience here. Now the next project is of course to plant our sugarcane. I'm gonna need a ton of sugarcane because I need to make an enchantment setup. And the reason I need an enchantment setup is because I need a bee farm. And to build a bee farm, a crucial ingredient is of course bees. And the only way I can get bees is with a silk touch pickaxe which I'll only be able to get from an enchanting table. And here we go. I've dug out a little hole. I've made some bookcases and it's time to start setting up our enchantment table. So I'm just going to line the walls here with some bookcases. 
few more on this side, and then the three in the back, of course, and hang on. Hang on, where does it not go there? Um I I don't know what this is supposed to look like. Somehow my brain glitched out and no, 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 that is definitely not right. But it's okay. We've got the books back and we're gonna try it again just now. So let's go make some more bookcases and then we'll come back and complete the enchantment setup. No sooner said than done, our enchantment setup is ready and I've already given it a test run. I got efficiency 2 on that axe, but we're gonna try again. So I uh, need some lapis lazuli. Let's pop that in there, pop the axe in there, and we are going for silk touch. Nope. 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 Nah. And finally we have it, our last piece of lapis lazuli. We got silk touch on our axe, and I'll say we've been properly trolled by that table today. And we've got all the beehives we need, we have all the stuff we need. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to go to the nether as soon as I can find my little cellar. Ah, it's right over here. As you'll see, I've done some work. I have set up a nether portal right here. And this is the first time we're going through, so what do we expect? Well, the nether, I suppose. And yeah, that's exactly what we've got. We've got the nether and the first thing I need is some quartz because I need to make dispensers in order to build my bee farm. So let's grab a bit of that. And then I think let's just do a little bit of housekeeping. That lava is going to go everywhere in just a second. Yeah, there it goes already. Let's see if we can just tame this a little bit. If I dig a hole, nah, I will need to block this off. So let's just get a few blocks of stone in here. There we go and just stem the flow of this lava and just limit the danger a little bit because safety is our number one concern and with our dispensers crafted the last piece of the puzzle has fallen into place we can start building our bee farm now i'm gonna build it out of cobblestone because i don't think ghosts can blow up cobblestone and i want to keep my bees nice and safe now I don't need a massive bee farm and the reason I decided to build it in the nether is because there's no day night cycle in the nether which means the bees are constantly working making honey making wax and I can hear that ghost around here somewhere I haven't seen him but it sounds like he's pretty close and I hope he's gonna no nah, he's not gonna leave me alone there he goes Ooh, that barely missed okay this is not gonna work stop blowing up my stuff please Mr. Ghost Okay, let's just put out these fires and hope he leaves us alone for now. And we've been able to complete most of our bee farm. It's time to add the bees. So I'm just going to pop the beehives in there and then top it off with some cobblestone. Oh, they're coming out. Let's get this. Let's. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, no, please. No, no, no. Come back. Come back. Come back, little bee. Okay, let's just cover that up so no more of them can escape. And then let's see if we can get these guys back into the farm and top it off so they can't fly away. Um, okay, so they are literally one or two pixels too high and as a result I can't place this block. So let's see if I just maybe try and nudge them in there. Uh, he's gone in and I, I was too late. The next one has already taken his place. Um, Alright, let's see. I'm gonna try and just nudge this guy over to that side. He is not going in. Um, oh, this is not going as well as I intended. Come on. Oh, there we go, there we go. Let's get the block and the bees are in, which means we can add a roof to this thing and call it a day while we are waiting for the honey to start rolling in. And as it turns out, I missed the crucial step of adding shears to the dispensers. So I was waiting for honey to come in and nothing was happening. But we've remedied that and we can finally put the roof on this bee farm. Which means our bees will be safe. We have a nice little spot where we can AFK and wait for all of the honeycomb that we need. And one more block. There we go. We've got a nice little box to protect us from everything out there. Uh, that was not part of the plan and already we have 12 honeycomb this is gonna work brilliantly and it's not going well it's not go oh no no oh goodness where's my food it's ah oh, it's too late that's it the doom counter moves up to five 
And now the worst of all is I have to go into the nether absolutely naked and try and get my stuff. So the ghost blew up my nether portal on the other side, my flint and steel was on me when I died, as was all of my iron. So I had the bright idea of putting down some lava, adding a few logs and waiting for it to catch fire and I've been standing here for about 10 minutes waiting for it to catch fire before I remembered I had turned off fire tick, it's never gonna catch fire. Anyway, we've been down into the mines once again. We've got a flint and steel this time and it's time to move back to the nether. Let's just drop that there. And here we go once again. And it, this this is not the same spot as I came through last time and already I'm on fire. I'm going to die before I even take five steps. Let's just go back. And at least if I die this time, all my stuff will be... Oh, okay, I survived and it's actually not a good thing. I'm down to one and a half heart. I have no food. I have no armor. And we're going back into the nether with almost zero health. And the ghast is already being very, very nasty with me. But we'll see if we can take care of him. He's been a pain in my backside for as long as I've been in this place. And I'm going to turn his own weapons against him. So let's just put out these fires. And then wait for him to shoot a fireball at us. We'll whack it back at him and hopefully take him out. So here we go. No, apparently not. Okay, here we go for real this time. And no, missed, barely missed. Okay, let's try that again. And oh, come on. And uh, oh, no, don't break this one, please. Uh, okay, um. I think I better shift tactics. Forget about the ghast. He's moved away. Let's just get this fixed up so I don't fall through there. And then I think while the ghast is moving away a little bit, I'm just going to make a run for it. I'm going to bridge over here as quickly as I can. Yes, let's grab all of our stuff. No. <sighs> Alrighty. So that was two in quick succession. And as I mentioned earlier, I want there to be a penalty when I die, and I think this qualifies. The ghast has blown up literally everything I own. I have nothing left. Not even a single piece of dirt survived. So yeah, as I said, I think that qualifies. I have lost literally everything that I was carrying with me, and there was some good stuff. My diamond pickaxe, all of my iron, and um, yeah. We have rebuilt, we have regained everything we have lost, and we have some upgrades as well. As you can see, I now have a diamond chest piece, and we are ready to go. I think we have everything we need to start building our starter house, and we're gonna get going. I've laid out the floor plan here, and it's time to place some blocks. Now, at the moment, I still don't have a replay mod for 121, so we're just gonna work through this step by step. And the first step is, of course, some of these beautiful new tough bricks. We'll just place one down here, one down here, and then we're gonna add in some bricks to start the wall right over there. Absolutely beautiful. With our first wall built, we're gonna add in just a little bit of granite here and there just to give it some texture variation. Not over there, let's just take that one out and yeah. All right, most of the first story has been built well, about half of it, and it's looking good so far. So let's continue on this side as well. And it's time to add some tough pillars. And for this, I'm using some tough bricks, some smooth tough, and of course, the chisel tough bricks. And let's take a look. Oh, I really do love that tough. The first story is pretty much complete. It's time to move up in the world. And that means starting off on the second story. Now I've got some more spruce logs. I'm just going to put one here just to create a pillar where we can start the second story. And for the base of the second story, I've added a little bit of trim at the top. And yes, this is really starting to take shape. The combination of the bricks, the tough and the wood is looking absolutely fantastic. We've got the top story frame and it's time to start working on the roof. So let's just get a few slabs in here. Take it up one more slab over on this end. And then we'll start adding in some stairs. I want this roof to sweep up to a nice peak in the middle. And the last touch, let's add a few blocks right here in the middle. 
And that is looking really, really good so far. Time to get the rest of the roof designed. And there we go. The roof in the middle for the main part of the top story is designed, as are all the other parts. And that means we can start using a few more of these beautiful tough bricks. So let's get that in there, one over there and one in the middle. Now the biggest challenge I have is of course waiting for my copper to oxidize. And while we're waiting I'm going to start off with some windows and I've decided to go with white windows instead of clear. And finally our copper has oxidized which means we can start tiling the roof. Got some copper slabs over here and we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. It is looking magnificent but it's time to de-age just some of this copper so I'm just going to go over here and then in patches de-age some of the copper leading up to the top of the roof and as we go up it's going to become more and more de-aged and I think this is looking fantastic so let's just get these a little bit de-aged and then we will wax them and that is why I needed the bee farm that is why I went through all of the trouble of getting all of this wax. Now to be perfectly honest, I don't think I have quite enough wax yet, but we'll see how far we get. And the roof is in, the basic structure is done, it's time to start adding some finer details. The house has been detailed, the last thing we need to do is just take a little bit of time to make the area surrounding it look awesome as well. And for that, we're going to be using some coarse dirt and some cobblestone. No trees just yet, we'll get to that a bit later. And our starter house is finally done. It's taken over a hundred in-game days, but if you think that's a long time to build a starter house, it's not exactly all that we have done. We have done so, so much more. In fact, we have set up a cow pen, a pig pen, a wheat farm, a beetroot farm, an enchantment setup. We've built a nether bee farm, we have built a skeleton farm and of course our magnificent starter house. And as promised, I have made my axolotl a little pond in which he can swim a bit more freely. And this house is looking phenomenal from every single angle. It is just gorgeous. I've used a lot of copper, I have used some tough, not too much, I didn't want to absolutely overdo it with the tough, but I think the little bit that I have used is working perfectly and just look at that, literally from every angle there's something to see in the starter house and of course there's something to see inside as well, yes I've done a full interior and we're gonna take a quick tour. Over here we've got the kitchen, the stove's cooking away and one of the new 121 paintings over there. So let's move upstairs to the bedroom and step out onto the balcony. We've got some copper furniture out there looking absolutely beautiful and we can sit here and enjoy the sunset. Inside the bedroom we have a magnificent desk, a big chair neatly tucked in under the desk and over here another one of the 121 paintings. It is a dinosaur of some sort I think. But it looks pretty cool and I really do like it. We've got our bed back there, we've got some bookshelves and this entire room is looking amazing. Moving back downstairs in the foyer, nothing but a small table over there. We're keeping the clutter to a minimum but as you'll see I've used some of the copper trapdoors to also partition the rooms just to break it up into smaller spaces which looks a little bit better. Over here we have a useless cupboard but it looks pretty cool. We have some more bookshelves and then let's go downstairs because this is one of my favorite rooms in this house. It is my storage room, my workstation and it is looking amazing. I've used a lot of the new tuff down there. We've got some of the new 121 paintings and over here we have some furnaces, a workbench, pretty much almost everything we will ever need. But that ladies and gentlemen is unfortunately all we have time for in this episode. It's been a bit of a long one, but it has been one heck of a journey. I really do hope you enjoyed the episode, leave a like if you did, and if you want to see some more, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But this is Fungosaurus Rex saying, until next time beautiful people, stay awesome, bye bye.